Welcome yes. back to my channel. Just Shauna here to talk about a couple friggin' books. Today I am talking about the Amberlow Dossier Trilogy. So it's Amberlow, Armistice, and then Amnesty. All by Laura Elena Donnelly. And I mean, these covers, can we just like, what, what, what? So beautiful. So beautiful. I've talked about these books already in wrap ups and things, but I wanted to do a whole video dedicated to it just because I feel like not a lot of people know about it, maybe. And a lot of you, I think, would enjoy it. Those of you looking for adult uh, books that are, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. It's categorized sometimes as fantasy, but it's really not. It's just a totally made up, fictionalized world with made up countries, made up politics and governments and whatever, but there's no magic or anything. This is not like a magical, fantastical world. It's just people living in this entirely fictionalized world. And it's very heavy on its espionage and spies and subterfuge and some political, you know, maneuverings, but you're not, the, the characters you're following, you're following multiple characters who are all intertwined but some of them work for the government, but you're not following like the leader or anything like that, like the ruler of the country. It's not about that, it's about the people below them, the people fighting in the revolution, the people on both sides, the people uh, committing treason against their government because they want to revolt and throw them over. So it just isn't stuff I normally read. Some fantasy that I read does have political intrigue, but usually it is from within, right? You're following the kings and the queens or the, you know, the rulers in whatever fashion and seeing how they backstab each other and whatnot. So this was a little different and I'm just always a little confused with political intrigue if it's really heavy. I get lost, I get very lost. It's just, I don't know, my mind doesn't go to those places naturally. It makes me feel fucking dumb sometimes. I read this and I was, I was confused, I'm not gonna lie. For most of this book, definitely the first 50% of Amber Lowe, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Who's working for who? Oh my God, stop getting the water, man. I was like, who's working for who? Who's doing, oh my God, fucking stop. Yeah, I really, I didn't know who was working for who, who was doing what, I was confused about the motives and I was very, I was just lost. But I just kept reading because the characters were really interesting and I, I honestly feel like, and again, I'm probably a dumb dumb. Some of you maybe have read this and you're like, why the fuck were you so confused, Shauna? I don't know, whatever, I was. But I, I just really liked the characters and I started to feel kind of like it was, you know, working, working the brain muscles. <laughs> if you read like spy thrillers already, then this is probably not anything new to you as far as the, the style. Uh, you probably wouldn't be as fucking confused as I was. And the whole, the world is very like Gilded Age-esque and the government is very reminiscent of like a Nazi Germany type situation. Uh, the people are very oppressed. You can't be gay, you can't be this, you can't be that. Uh, being different races is not cool. Uh, dating different races, like it's a whole thing. So yeah, there's this like revolution brewing and you're, you're seeing that happening and you're seeing key players in the revolution uh, start to take action and do, do shit. And then in the second book, which is Armistice, and I read Amberlow quite a while ago. I think I read it earlier last year, maybe. But yeah, then Armistice, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, so don't worry, but the revolt is like fully underway now, and in this one our characters are a lot more under fire and having to make some drastic choices and drastic decisions, and you get introduced to a couple new characters who I really liked. And I don't really want to say too much else about this because I don't want to give away anything with the plot. But I will just say that by the time we got to Amnesty, um, first of all, this is my favorite cover by far because of the pink and purple. Um, some drastic things had happened uh, just within the story. 
And at the beginning of this book, we find out that one of the main characters from the first two books has died. And the character that died was really the only character who wasn't kind of a selfish, greedy piece of shit. Because <laughs> the rest of them, they, they have their reasons for doing what they do, but a lot of them, it's just like survival mode times 10 that makes them end up being kind of greedy and selfish. And they just do some shitty things to people because they don't give a fuck. They're like, I'm trying to live, I'm trying to survive in this world. And if I have to kind of throw you over the side of the boat in the process, I don't really care because sorry that you weren't smart enough, basically. So they're really interesting and complex, but they're not good people. But the one that was a good person and altruistic, yeah, they, she died. And I was, I was real upset about that. And you didn't see her, like, die. it was off the page. So that was kind of a bummer but I didn't really mind it all that much. And I'll just say with this one that I was very satisfied with the conclusion. Not necessarily everything is all tied up uh, in a neat little bow. The country, the main country that you're um, kind of watching, Amberlo, is left, and Geta um, is the other one. They're kind of right by each other. They're kind of the same thing, but not. Anyways, Geta and Amberlo, they're kind of left in a little bit of a, yeah, you don't really know what, what is happening as far as the government, but you know what's happening with all the characters, and that's what made me satisfied with it. Um, if they had left everything totally open-ended, if, if the author had left everything completely open-ended, you don't know what happens to the characters, you don't know what happens to the government, that would have been really annoying <laughs> for me personally, but that was not the case. So I very much appreciated that. I don't want to get, yeah, I don't want to get too much into it further. Um, I don't want to give spoilers for anything. But yeah, I highly recommend this. If an adult uh, kind of spy, espionage, revolution story in a made-up world with some LGBT and POC representation sounds like something you might be into, then check it out. And I will say too, for those of you that, you know, want to say you hate things being forced into stories when they don't need to be. That's not how it felt in this book, in these books at all. It just, this was the world and there you go. And it was very reminiscent of our world, but it was made up and it did have its own, its own issues and, um, you know, prejudices and things. That is all, uh, very quick. Didn't want to get all spoilery and whatnot. So yeah, I just wanted to highly recommend this series. If you've read any of these books, let me know what your thoughts were. I rated all of them at least four stars, I do believe. I know the last two I did, and I'm pretty sure Amber Lowe I did as well. As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>